I'd like to show you something about uh, factoring now. Uh, this factoring is a concept that causes students a lot of trouble. I think first of all, it's important to understand why we even do this. So I did a video just before where I was talking about expanding. So here we were taking some binomial term, you know, something times something. We were looking at what we get when we expand it all. Well, factoring is doing the opposite. Okay, so factoring is doing the opposite opposite of, oops, I'm going to make sure my S is clear here, opposite of expanding. Now, why in the world might we even use this? I'm going to give you an example, first of all. Uh, I'm going to put this just over here on the left, and then I'm going to explain to you what we might be using this for. So I'll do my example over here on the left. My example could be a uh, factor, or some people call this factorize. So factorize the following. Uh, maybe it's x squared. We're going to do something that is a quadratic. And if you don't know what that means, that's just, we're looking at something, uh, an expression here, a polynomial, which means it has more than one sort of term. And this is a quadratic because it's to the power of two here. This, the highest power is two. If I had it, you know, as a three here, this would have been called a cubic, or you can have a quartic or so on. But Quadratics are very, very common, especially in high school math. You work a lot with quadratics. So the idea is to get this x squared plus x minus 2 as something in this sort of form where I can have like a bracket, like, you know, something plus something times something plus something. Maybe there's a minus going on. It doesn't matter. But the idea is to get it in that form. Now, why would we do this? Uh, a lot of students, I think, need to see why we do this. So uh, factoring can be useful. Oops, maybe I'll just say um, useful for so it's useful for um, let's say finding the zeros in other words sometimes people call those the roots sometimes people call those the solutions so my example for you is if I was looking at this graph of x squared plus x minus 2 uh, it turns out, without really knowing much else about quadratic equations, I just want to quickly just sketch what it's going to look like. This is my x and this is my y, and I want to try to sketch this. I'm going to be very, very rough for right now. Um, of course, we can do a lot more details. But just to start with, let's just say I want to have my x squared plus x minus 2. First of all, it's a quadratic, and quadratic equations have a shape of a parabola. In other words, they're either like this or like this. So either they're happy parabolas or sad parabolas, so to speak. Now, we can tell if it's uh, happy or sad, as it were, if this right here term is positive or negative. In other words, if there was a negative in front of this, it would be a sad parabola opening downwards. But this one right here opens upwards. Now, I don't exactly know where it meets. In other words, maybe I'll just sketch it like this. But keep in mind, I could be completely wrong. Maybe I got this one wrong and maybe it's over here. Or maybe it's actually up here or down here. Or maybe, in fact, it needs to be stretched a little bit. Okay, so just keep that in mind that this thing right here can be moved. Maybe it has to be a little bit narrower. It could be all sorts of different things done with this right here. But the idea is that it'll still open upwards. Oops. So the idea behind this is if I want to find the zeros or the roots, sometimes they're called the solutions, that would be where this thing right here equals zero. I'm just going to write this down right now just like this. If I wanted to find when this thing here equals zero, using algebra only, I'd get stuck. So it turns out... Uh, by using this trick of factoring that I'm about to show you, it'll help you in order to solve equations. In other words, if we wanted to find where this thing equals zero, that would be you know this point and this point. We'd know where this thing crosses, the x-axis. In other words, that's where the y value is zero. Getting a little bit ahead of myself, I'm just going to leave it like this, x squared plus x minus 2. And in fact, we don't even need this graph. Let's just say we're going to do this just for the sake of factoring because the teacher told you to. But see, the worst thing I find is if uh, someone just says factorize and a student asks, well, why do we factorize? And if a teacher just says, just because. I don't think that really helps out the student very much. So that's why I just wanted to show you why we use it. But let's actually go over a little bit of what to do. I'm going to show you a strange trick. I think factoring is something that teachers have so many, so many different teachers have so many different ways of showing you how to do this. I'm going to show you one way that works for all cases. I haven't seen cases where this way doesn't solve it. 
But keep in mind, it starts off pretty normal. Most factoring sort of tricks do this, uh, what I'm going to show you, uh, the first couple of steps at least. But then the last couple of steps are gonna be really strange. So I'm first just going to write down the steps. And they may not make much sense right now. So I'm just gonna write them down first. And then I'm gonna walk you through some examples with using these tricks here. So take out, this is the first step, is to take out any common factors. So for example, if I can take out, you can hear me almost say out. Well, people tease me because I'm Canadian, but there it is, I am Canadian, so I can't hide that. So we take out any common factors. In other words, what if I had like a two here and a two in front of here and a two here, I could take that out. So we first have to take out any common factors in what we're looking at. Then we would write out A and B and C. And what I mean by that, that's because all quadratics can be written in this form, AX squared plus BX plus C. A quadratic can always be written like this. In other words, there's a number in front of the X squared, there's a number in front of the X, and then there's something sitting by itself. So that's the next step. I like to give students at least steps. Um, now, of course, you could do this in any other way, but uh, at least this is a way to do it. Now here, this is going to be find the, well, I'm going to call it the magic numbers. Now keep in mind, I'm just teaching you a way to do this, right? There's not, uh, this isn't the only way, hardly. So I'm going to write down that the magic numbers, it's going to be product, it's going to be a times c, and the sum is going to be b. Now that probably doesn't make any sense right away, and that's okay. Four. There's two more steps here. So four, divide by a, and reduce fractions. Now it's getting even weirder. And the very last step, read from bottom to top. Now this also probably won't make any sense at all, not at first. So I'm, uh, I'm going to show you these steps using this example here. So first of all, let's take out any common factors to this. Are there any? No. So step one is done. Step two, write out a, b, and c. Let's write those out. So in this case, a is the number in front of x squared, which is one. b is going to be the number in front of the x, so that's also one. c is going to be the number by itself, which is negative two. Because remember, they might not be in the right order. Maybe they're written in a really weird order. Maybe it's minus two plus x plus x squared or something like that. Now I want to find the magic numbers next. In other words, the product, I'm going to explain this in a second, what I mean by product here. So product is going to be a times c. So in other words, it's going to be negative two. The sum is going to be b, and b is just one. So the magic numbers I'm trying to find are two numbers whose product are, is negative two and whose sum is one. When I mean product, I mean two numbers who multiply to negative two. So what I like to do is just start off by writing all the numbers that multiply to negative two. Well, there's only uh, one choice, really. There's one and negative two, that'll work. Actually, there's a second one. There's also negative one and two. See, one times negative two will give you negative two, and negative one times two will also give you that. You can't forget about this extra one here. Now, those are two pairs of numbers that multiply to negative two. Do any of these add up to one? It turns out, yes. Let's see, which one does that? So this one right here, one minus two, that won't work. If I add them up, I get negative one. That's not right. But if I add up negative one plus two, that one will work. So I'm going to circle it. Those are my magic numbers, so to speak. So I'm just gonna write them like this. I found my magic numbers. Okay, the magic numbers are negative one and two. 